Um, so you guys get uh, a bonus because I'm going to do two and one, two talks and one. The reason I'm doing this is because I put together this new one, which motivates why we have extensions. So let's get to it very quickly. So I call this Let a Thousand Flower Blooms. It's actually going to be part of the keynote. The problem is the keynote, uh, I have five minutes, so you get the full set. Uh, I think it's interesting because it brings, it raises an important problem that we have. Why do we have extensions? This is uh, the reason, I think. Okay. So first thing is, um, what is this? Uh, we're in Switzerland. Uh, this is a cow, right? Uh, most people know companies like IBM have products that are essentially cash cow. And I can talk about IBM, but I'm sure it replicates everywhere. And what happens when you have a cash cow? You protect it. It's sacred. But it also is a problem, OK? And the reason it's a problem, if my timer would work, is the innovator's, uh, innovator's dilemma. Uh, I don't know if any of you are in business or if you've read this book. Uh, the issue is that every other company will try to kill that cow. And the problem is going to be that you are going to protect it as much as you can. And the reason you protect it is because it's your cash cow. And the problem with protecting it is that the people that are killing it, they're going to invent something new, and you're going to miss out on it. This is a problem that happens everywhere. Okay? So for instance, Kodak. Uh, you've seen me taking pictures, so I'm sort of a fan of uh, cameras, but Kodak uh, as you know, is a you know, hundred plus year company, and they dominated film. And then eventually, if you guys remember, I can see all of you are old enough, uh, they've also invented uh, those little uh, pocket cameras. They also invented digital camera. So Kodak could have been Apple, because your iPhone, my iPhone, is literally a camera. That's what people use the most. But Kodak is almost non-existent. Why? Because they were protecting their cash cow. Another uh, example of this is storage. Uh, IBM invented storage. This was like a gigabyte or a megabyte, sorry, of storage uh, when it was invented, less than about 50 years ago. And obviously, what happened with storage is that it evolved into things like, for instance, this is a one gig gigabyte um, uh, Seagate, which literally doesn't exist anymore. You can't even buy this. You could buy it on eBay, obviously, but you can't buy it new. Uh, any of you remember these things? Zip drive? How many of you have still some of those, right? Exactly. And then now, that's the only thing you can really get, SSD. I mean, there are still computers shipping with hard drive, but pretty much SSD is what you get. The reason I mention this is because the guy that came up with the innovative dilemma from Harvard is Clayton Christensen. And if you read his book, the first few chapters talk about how storage, the storage business, literally is littered with these people, these companies, protecting their technology. Because as people went from DASD to things like SSD, it's a brand new storage technology. So if you had, for instance, the technology of the spinning disk, you protected the next, that one, and then you lost on the next one. And then you kept doing that. So all of those companies died, or they got merged, and so on. So why am I talking about this in an extensions and also in open source? It's because I feel that there's also the open source dilemma. I think seriously that we need to look at ourselves and say, how do you keep your project relevant and people still interested in your project without necessarily protecting what you currently have? And if you look at Cloud Foundry, for instance, we have this problem. We literally was the king, but now we have to, I'm happy that we have Kubo and we have all these other things with Kubernetes, but we could have had what Kubernetes, the excitement around Kubernetes. We could have had the excitement around Docker. You talk to other people, this might be a controversial statement, right? Because we have a way forward and I'm happy with it, so I'm not criticizing it. I'm saying that the next set of technology two years from now, we need to make sure as a community, we keep the excitement. So how do we make that happen? So how do we protect our, well, not protect it, but how do we make sure we embrace the future, right? How do we make sure that we don't have a cash cow that we're protecting and then we get passed by the next thing? 
So I think uh, there are examples of these in open source. I didn't spend a lot of time you know, trying to beat up on any particular, but I think a lot of people, I saw a couple of people smile when I put Apache struts here. Uh, they've been suffering recently from a huge uh, problem in the security. But the point is that if you've ever used Apache struts, you know that Spring Boot is essentially a way better version of that. And they protected their Apache struts, and now it's sort of causing all kinds of problems. And I use struts. I, I was part of that community, right? So I'm not criticizing it per se, but I'm saying that how could they have maybe evolved into a project that still survived very well today? That's the question that I'm asking, right? And I have one part of the solution, I think, at the end. Uh, the, other part, the other one is Tomcat. Uh, IBM, I can talk since I'm part of IBM. We were part of this, and we still probably ship it. But we've evolved it, right? We've evolved it into WebSphere and various versions of that over time, right? Liberty and so on. And other companies have done the same. So there is a way forward to open source staying relevant while you can still protect a little bit of your cash cow. And I think the best way is this, is to let a thousand flower bloom, right? The idea is that you allow innovation. For a platform like Cloud Foundry, which is massive, each one of those small pieces could be an Apache struts. Uh, you need this. You need to have a thousand flowers, right? So how do you make this happen? Uh, so embrace invite people, right, and extend. And that gets us into extensions, right? So what is CF extensions? CF extensions is a process for any one of you, any one of your companies to contribute to Cloud Foundry. And it doesn't matter what you're trying to do. If you're trying to replace Diego or trying to replace a component of it, I want to talk to you. I want to hear, I want to have a discussion with you, and we'll see how we can make it happen. Now, obviously, there's a process, so it means that you, know, you come with your idea, hopefully you have some code behind it, uh, and we review it, we spend time, I certainly spend time with people, and it's not just me, there's a whole community of people that care. Uh, you, know, you, you heard from Dr. Nick, Sandy, there's tons of people that will eventually get to reviewing your project. Uh, so you propose it, it gets reviewed, it gets voted on, and when it gets voted on, you add it to the Cloud Foundry incubator. And then the best part is once that goes through, and of course your project now is part of the incubation process, if it becomes something that a, any member of the community is releasing in production and making money and part of a business, you can actually go through the same process again, but this time to add it as a core project. So whether it be runtime or Bosch or somewhere else. Okay, so there's a way. Uh, I don't care if you're Pivotal, IBM, you know, whatever company you are, uh, or a small company just new with Cloud Foundry, uh, I want to know that you're doing something interesting, and if you want to contribute it, you have a place, and you have somebody and a process to make it happen. Okay? So that's the key. Um, how do you participate? It's actually super easy. Um, you just tag your GitHub project with a topic of CF extensions, and it's going to start a whole process of asking you to create a proposal. Obviously, there's a link on how you get the proposal uh, started. Uh, you have to, we, sh we should have a chat. I mean, obviously, I, I don't want myself to be slowing down the process. So if you think you want to have a chat with somebody else in the community, we can make that happen as well. The point here is so that we don't have duplicated projects, uh, right? There is a place in the community that Dr. Nick created called the Cloud Foundry community where people can just come and just put as much as you want so there could be duplication and so on. And it's great because it's a great fertile ground. What I'm trying to do is to take those flowers there and remove the weeds and make sure that we have maybe the groups of flowers that are red together and the groups that are yellow together to kind of make a nice you know, uh, garden. Uh, so that's kind of the idea. Um, we have an extensions channel on Slack where you can start some discussions. The cab now is officially the place where you can bring your projects forward to the community. Uh, we typically do this after you've, got, you've gotten a chance to chat with me or somebody else in the community to make sure that this project is not a duplication or you should talk to other people and so on. So we do the first kind of step. In the Slack channel and the cab, you can actually get to present it uh, and, and, and have some feedback. 
And then we have monthly calls that we're trying to get uh, going as well. We've been doing this for uh, about six months, and Kubo came out of this. Now, obviously, Kubo officially started with Pivotal and Google talking. Then they approached, you know, after they got some version of it, they started talking to me because the extensions was kind of getting started. Then we got, I, I gave them some feedback. Uh, typically, um, what I tend to do also is I talk to the relevant people. So Kubo being Kubernetes and, and, and Bosch, I spent time talking to the Bosch uh, groups to give them feedback and so on. And it went through that process. And now, since it's becoming a product, it's probably going to graduate to become its own thing. But there are other products also as well, right? So IBM contributed a backers. That's also part of it. Now SAP is deeply involved and pretty much uh, you know, leading the charge there. Uh, there's a new project called BBR, which is Bosch Backup Restore. Uh, if you didn't know about this, this is a great place to see it. Uh, SAP has just started the process for Service Fabric. I put it there because I wanted to highlight not just projects that have gone through the process and are already, are ready, but projects that are going through the process right now so that you can take a look at it. Uh, obviously, there are different opinions, right? So there are going to be projects that, that die uh, or that don't belong to Cloud Foundry. So there's a project called Unic, which was a Unic kernel project that hasn't gotten traction, although I was very excited when, they, when uh, it was contributed. But this one probably will, will get out. So these are some of the projects. One thing I want to show you, uh, and then I'll take some questions is um, this thing here. So once you have your projects uh, tagged, or you added a topic of CF extension, it gets added to this list where we essentially are keeping track of who's the lead, uh, a little bit of description, the links, the releases, and so on. Uh, this is an automatically generated page. Uh, the idea is that as we start having thousands of projects, I'm hoping, maybe not thousand, let's say hundreds, um, then uh, we'll make this a little bit more browsable, searchable, you know, with uh, different uh, classification and so on. So as a member of the community, if you're new and you're like, well, I want to know what's going on in Cloud Foundry besides the core stuff. I want to see, like, say, new uh, service uh, brokers. I want to see new releases, anything like a new CPI, for instance, that's not part of Bosch yet. You come here, and there'll be a way for you to search. This is a project. It's called CF Extensions. Uh, I lead it. I code it. But I'm <laughs> taking contributions. So if you want to participate, uh, feel free. Um, so with that, let me stop. Uh, this is the second talk that just goes into more details. But I want to see if you have any questions, especially if you have a project that you have. Yes. Uh, I have a Dr. Nick. Yes. Why I get to talk first? I'll put my hand up first, but if you have a microphone for your questions. Um, aside from you know your uh, your dismissal of the Cloud Foundry community organization, um, <laughs> but it, it, I you know I, that that was created uh, three four years ago, yeah. Um, and and then the incubator idea came along, and uh, I, I've never really understood and I, wh wh like the the the, the um, Certain members of the foundation will be dismissive of yeah. or, or treat the, those projects as second class. We don't get to, we're not part. Of, I don't even know what we is. Like it's just, it's just projects. So why uh, why why don't we get to in the Cloud Foundry community? Why can't the, what does it take for those things to be able to have, the the signing certificates so that the plugins and whatever can be distributed or right. or I don't get it. I think at at the end of the day. You know, it's, it's, as you know, it's more than code, right? It's organization, it's matching regulations uh, that make things successful. Meaning, like, um, if you're going to try to sell to, uh, say, for instance, uh, a company in Japan, they have regulations, and it's very strong regulations on how, you know, things get uh, added to their um, portfolio of things you can sell them. For instance, you can't have a product sold in Japan uh, that is version 0 point something. It has to be 1 point. Oh, that seems odd, right? Why, why does it have to be that way? So well, because no, no Diego for them then? But, well, the, the point, the, the, the reason I'm mentioning this is that when you have a free for all GitHub organization or GitHub itself, uh, it makes things difficult to find the gems. 
like the, the diamonds, but, right? But I argue that, that the Cloud Foundry organization is full of, I mean, the people who have access to create new projects, create new projects. I no, don't have access, no. so I don't create projects there. No, actually, it's so... It's full of nonsense as, as other you could, you could argue that, you could argue that, I can see. I think part of what we're doing in Cloud Foundry Incubator and Cloud Foundry is to put some organization to what was lacking in the past, right? So obviously, because we didn't have this two-phase organization, uh, things kind of were everywhere. Now it's starting to become more uh, regulated, regimented. And the reason for this is to put structure so that when people come that are new, they have a good, they have a place where they know they can go and they can trust it. They can, you know, there's some level of initial trust. Okay, it doesn't so mean, it doesn't mean though. Let's explain trust then. Yeah, well, I mean by trust is that it's, 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 for me, trust is reputation, one part of it, and the next part is to help you um, make decisions in a way that you know is is easier than having to go and 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 look at the source code and go through all the lawyering things and make sure the license is not gonna make you uh, ship beer to this one guy somewhere in China okay, that so, says, so what you know, is it? he wants to drink like... So what uh, is it else that goes in right. on the incubator projects or the extension projects that adds trust that every other project... Well, so, so for one, uh, you know, my employer, IBM, pays me to spend time and review each one of those projects. So you get my time. Now, maybe that's not valuable to you. That's, that's fair. It's always valuable. But you get... Was that? Oh. No, I'm, I'm just saying that I think it is valuable, but I'm just saying, like, you may not think it's valuable. But the point I'm, I'm saying is that you get a process that makes sure that the project that gets added is not a duplication. It's not like, a, you know, hopefully it, does, it, it goes through all the checks. Um, you know, it has the right license. Uh, it's adding to the community. So in other words, you're not reinventing something that the community already has. You're not fragmenting so it. So service so Fabric is, so is they just took the Docker Bosch release and the CF Container Broker and forked it. And Right, so so that's part of the the, the reason why I, I, I should have put a star next to it. I should have put a star next to it because it's submitted, uh, but it has issues, and and I'm working with them to solve those issues. And I'd love to that you feedback, uh, you know, on on those issues as well, because I don't want to be the only person no, you know, pointing really out that. you know it's problems. Like, right, I, I've been making open source projects for ten years, yeah. and and it's weird. For this other thing to exist that says ours are better in some nebulous way, mm -hmm. maybe more visible. Maybe there's an extra licensing thing. Maybe the well, CLA process. It, is there's important. also more than that, right? So there's also the fact that. And I'm happy. Before, to I wasn't saying. Do you want all the projects to go in? Or? There's also no, no. There's also the fact that you know, right now, if you're new to this community, you don't really get a sense for where can I go and add things. Where can I extend? I mean, there's like, you know, it's this vast nebulous thing. And you know how to install it and get it ready and run your apps. But what, what if you wanted to add your own build pack? How do you get to do that? Now, obviously, you could you know, work hard and see a copy and copy it and change it and so on. But this is trying to put some structure and saying, here's a way that you can actually go through a process and you can talk to people and you can you know, get the support needed to have uh, your projects added and get some visibility and so on. So it is a management solution, right? So uh, I'll be fair, it's not a technical solution. Yeah, I just want to, to say that I really appreciate that there is a process and that people can know how to get into the project. I think that that's healthy, that, that it's not this everybody just adds something on GitHub and, and uh, it's, it's the end. Yeah. And I think it's also good to, to kind of vet these expectations and the obligations which come from maintaining a project as yes. part of a community. I think yes. and, and making this clear, I think, is a great thing. Um, I have one question, um, sure. because you talked about um, projects like a new CPI, for example, or uh, projects which would go into Bosch or into the runtime later. Um, I'm a little bit confused. What, what is the difference between extensions and incubation? I mean, right. uh, for a CPI, I would expect that this is incubated in the Bosch uh, right. PMC and not in the extensions PMC. How, how do you see that? Sure, mm. sure. Let's talk about that. But thank you for highlighting um, uh, the point that it's important to have these processes um, I, so Dimitri and I, Dimitri is the Bosch uh, PMC lead, uh, spent a lot of time chatting about this uh, question that you just asked, which is, if I have a CPI, I wanted to add it, does it belong in extension or does it belong in Bosch? Um, 
I think I, I think it belongs in extension. Dimitri also does, but he thinks some belongs in Bosch, and I think that's the confusion. Yes, hold on a sec. Uh, and and I and we're still arguing this, and so I'd lo I'd love to hear your feedback about this, the whole community. But let me give you my point. I don't want to speak for Dimitri. Uh, you can chat with him on on Slack, I'm sure. I think it belongs in extension for the following reason. I see extensions as every part of the platform that needs to incubate goes to extensions. And obviously, it can go to extensions very fast. So if it becomes a core CPI, meaning that other, like your company, for instance, is putting it in production, and it's following the, the rules, so it's not like breaking the process, not forking you know, Bosch, for instance, uh, then we can work to make it part of Bosch. Just like we'll do the same for runtime. So that's the simplest way to look at it, right? So everything always goes to extension, so it gets a level of scrutiny. If you don't want that level of scrutiny, then go to community. Perfectly fine. It's brilliant that it exists, right? It's free form also, so it's even better. But if you want the support, if you want the structure, then you come to incubator, and then eventually it goes to those different parts. So that's my view of it. But Dimitri has a different view, so you should. It, it, he has my view, but he has like an asterisk next to it. One more thing I want to mention is that uh, everything I've discussed, this is important for you too, uh, Dr. Nick, the process, the CF extensions, everything, is also, is also incubation. What I mean by this is the process itself. I've had feedback. Cornelius gave me feedback already. So if you have feedback on how this is being done, you can fix it with me. So. No, yeah, there, there's another question. Uh, Cindy, you had a question? Yeah, so I think you actually partially answered my question, but I think one of the things that may be helpful for people is, you know, as you say, the process is an incubation, but I think one of the things that a lot of new potential contributors face as an obstacle is the sort of, as you described, you know, the how do I contribute question. Right. But you know, there's, sort of a, there's an implied sort of workflow here. And it would be helpful, I think, for more contributors if that were published publicly. I mean, there's good docs on, how, as you say, how do I deploy Cloud Foundry? How do I yep. use Cloud Foundry? Yep. And for individual projects, like how do, I, yeah, you know, how do I create my own fork of this and test yep. it and whatnot? What isn't really well documented is what is the workflow to get new content into Cloud Foundry? Yep. You know, and so I hope that as part of this incubation process of of the extensions mm -hmm. project, one of the I would see one of the one of the deliverables I would want to see would be documentation of you know the things that you mentioned. You know that there is a Slack channel that maybe there is a flow from oh you start off as an extensions then you go into incubator and then yep. you eventually land up in the appropriate PMC. Well, yeah, so, no, know, maybe, maybe that's where it ends up, maybe it's not. But that's what I would like to see, and maybe even now just put a stake in the ground. Yeah. You know, here's how you, your personal vision of that. Because I, I think, you know, I remember when I first came to the Cloud Foundry community, and I was like, okay, where do I start? Mm -hmm. And obviously not where do I start as a user, where do I start as a developer looking to enhance the platform? Yeah. I think, I think that continues to be a point of frustration and question to this so day. So you, you, you raise exactly why extension exists, is to mm -hmm. try to solve this problem. Mm -hmm. so, so definitely that's part of our goal. I mean, it's a, it's a journey, right? It's not going to happen immediately. And you know, I started by quoting Clayton Christensen and, you know, you should you should read one of his books. Uh, you know, I, I don't work for him. I don't know the guy, but uh, what they are doing there is uh, at Harvard uh, under uh, Clayton is to try to figure out solutions for this. So there is even a new book called Innovators' Solution. Uh, and let me finish by saying that um, there is no one solution, right? So like this thousand flowers blooming, that may not work. Um, you know, Apple has a different way of doing, uh, of solving this issue that they have. Uh, and open source should have different ways because it's not a business per se, right? So this is one way that I think it works, by letting all in and then the success will flow. But there may be different ways. Uh, Linus Torvald has a different way of doing this. Uh, he's the benevolent dictator and, and he, you know, for all practical purposes, has been a resounding success with Linus. So I don't know if this is the only solution, but what I do know is that you have a way to make your voice heard, and you have me and a few others that I can introduce, and I can kind of like, you know, get Cindy, get you to talk to Cindy uh, to make your voice heard 
uh, and let's keep Cloud Foundry going. Okay, so with that, thank you.